Coming up on another special edition of How We Built It, I'm joined by American Gas and Electric Utility Firm, Southern Company, and we're going to see how they're evaluating Azure Synapse to make it easier to share anonymized data with their analytics partners and also strengthen their capabilities to do analytics in-house. So I'm joined today by enterprise architect Greg Floyd from Southern Company in Atlanta. Welcome to Microsoft Mechanics. Thanks for inviting me on your show. Thanks so much for joining us today. And by the way, if, if you're new to Azure Synapse, it really provides a unified environment where enterprise data warehousing and big data processing come together into a single service, really removing the traditional constraints for analyzing data of all shapes and sizes. Now, Greg, your uh, evaluation of Azure Synapse from Southern Company is interesting because you actually started off doing something very exploratory, and now it's actually opening the door for you and your team at Southern Company to build more analytics on top of the different models that you have and, and do more in-house. Can you tell us more? Right, yes. Our Synapse evaluation was initially scoped to prove out how we might optimize our data transformation and sharing process in our energy information exchange project. This is where we share anonymized data of initially 1.2 million customers with partners who have developed machine learning models and analytic services. They provide us back energy insights so we can offer products and services personalized for our customers like energy efficiency programs, community solar programs, and rate recommendations. All right, so your traditional model has been really to bring in partners to help with the analytics and, and kind of make these different recommendations for different customer campaigns, right? That's right. While we do our own analytics, we also use trusted partners to assist us. But the data we share does not contain any private customer information. We obfuscate and anonymize all of that. So what were things like then before Azure Synapse? Well, the current solution uses Azure Data Lake Analytics with SQL Server, C Sharp, and NewSQL. We do daily batch processes to export data out of our customer information system, storing our customer billing and rates data, and Hadoop, which has our energy data. Both are on-premises. This data is encrypted and uploaded to staging in a private storage account. Then the Azure Data Factory pipeline is triggered via an API that moves data from staging to raw storage and runs an ADLL process to first anonymize the data and create GUIDs for the account, meter, and premise keys and store that linked data into a database. Then it moves private data like customer name, address, or GPS coordinates to Cosmos DB. And it saves anonymized data as compressed JSON to give us a common schema and store it in our anonymized storage account. And finally, it triggers a notification that data is available for the approved data sets. Partners can then access the anonymized data via a secured API. All right, so it sounds like you're jumping kind of in and out of various uh, services, both in Azure and also through SQL databases. So how do things change then with Azure Synapse? Right, the process works well today, but notice analytics is not part of the end-to-end -end solution. And since we're expanding the scope to include data from 4.2 million customers, we wanted to prove out a better and simpler approach using Spark on a number of levels. With Synapse, rather than trying to bring together different services, it gives us a single environment incorporating the data lake, the data orchestration engine, and Spark. The main thing we were looking for was the ability to better distribute large data sets across an Azure data lake without imposing strict schemas. With Spark, the job could run in full batch mode and we could use the Parquet files with more flexible schemas instead of using SQL database tables. Proving this out in Azure Synapse would also strengthen our internal analytics by giving us a foundation to do more data analytics against raw data files in the data lake using SQL or Python notebooks. And this all sounds very powerful. Can we take a look? Absolutely. Let me walk you through our evaluation. We begin with our orchestration pipeline. Here we import data from delimited text and staging to parquet and raw storage, and then transform the data into anonymized information by calling Spark Notebooks. We first import account information and generate linkage keys with GUIDs, storing this in private storage. Then we transform each data set. So here's a sample notebook written in Scala where we transform raw customer account information into anonymized JSON in five steps. First, we load customer account data into a data frame from raw storage. We join linkage keys into the data frames that we generated earlier. Then we extract the private data with the linkage keys and store it in private storage. Notice the account key and private data in the output. 
Finally, we create an anonymized data frame and write it to compressed JSON in anonymized storage. And these are the storage folders representing different stages of the data transformation. In production, each container will be assigned to an account accessible only by the API for query or the data factory for transformation or Spark for analysis. This follows CQRS best practices. And here's the output JSON file showing energy readings from an anonymized meter. Our partners can run their models against this data and provide back a list of anonymized keys as potential candidates for a specific program. Using the linkage keys, we can map back to customer accounts. And this looks really great. So how does this change things for you now? So this was a small proof of concept, but now it simplifies the solution by reducing the number of overlapping technologies. It also provides a single pane of glass for data engineers and analysts. And the private parquet files can be used for in-house exploration and analysis. This is something new for us. All right, so can you give us a look at what you're doing now? Sure, let's get back to our Synapse workspace. In this notebook, I'm using PySpark and SQL to calculate energy usage from readings that were stored in a private folder. First, I read the energy data, and using windowing functions, I flatten the current and previous meter reading. Then I calculate the difference and store the energy usage in a Spark table. From there, using SQL serverless, I can query the usage for a particular account. Our internal folks could do something similar to suggest a time of use rate. All right, so this is awesome stuff. I love the progress that you've made. So what's next on the agenda then for Southern Company with Synapse? So today, this is preview technology. Next, we'll be testing out VNet service endpoints and the ability to secure slices of data in the data set. And from there, we'll look to run the whole process from Synapse in the future. And we also see potential for Synapse in other projects using data warehousing. And we're considering moving a portion of our Hadoop system to Synapse to focus more on big data analytics and less on infrastructure. Uh, great stuff, Greg. Thanks again for joining us today and really sharing your evaluation of Azure Synapse. By the way, if you liked what you saw with Southern Company, please check back to the rest of our How We Built It series at aka.ms slash Azure Synapse series to learn from other early adopters kicking the tires with Azure Synapse. That's all the time we have for this show. Thanks so much for watching and goodbye for now.